this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a bit of an experiment. I've gotten access to an AI art generator called Midjourney, and I'm going to be using that to generate a web page design from the mock up to the actual art assets used in the design itself. So let's go ahead and jump into this process and see what we end up with. Now, to add some context to what you're going to see next, Midjourney is a bot that you chat to in Discord, which is a chat app, and you can give it prompts, which are phrases. I can say something like panoramic view of a jungle, and it's going to spit out whatever it thinks matches that the closest. You can also add widths and heights and other different parameters to change the way the art comes out, but that's basically how this works. So the first step of this experiment is to jump into Discord and have Midjourney generate some web page designs based on the prompts that I give it. And you can see from this time lapse that I had to slog through quite a few poor results to get anything worth even considering for my web page design. But in the end, there were a few pretty decent results that I thought had good enough bones to go off of. So after weeding through a bunch of results, these are the ones that I kind of ended up with. And you can see that they're not quite cohesive enough to really base a design off of if you didn't know what you were doing, but they do kind of have some interesting bones. This one looks a little bit like maybe a newspaper site or something like that. This one was supposed to be a bank site, but the layout is a bit of a mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that one out of the running. I do like the idea of this header here with a big image. This looks like a footer, um, but this one is the most interesting to me. So I think that's gonna be the one that we work off of here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in my browser so that I have it to refer to while we're building. Now, I am going to need some images here, so I think it's time to go back to Midjourney and generate our actual art assets. I wanted to do an experiment to see if I could get a usable logo out of Midjourney, and as you can see here in the time lapse, I didn't have a lot of luck. Midjourney wasn't smart enough to know that I wanted a logo about tech, not one that said the words tech. I had much more luck when I took off the width and height parameters and went ahead and just let it do its thing at whatever size it deemed appropriate. Next, I went ahead and just generated a whole bunch of high definition images that kind of match the vibe of the web page design that we settled on. So I've got some pretty cool like panoramic views of mountains and jungles and a lake and stuff like that, that I figure we can slot into this design and it'll probably look pretty great. And so here are a few of the images I ended up with. If we need more, there are more to be had, but I figured these would probably cover the bases for this little landing page that we're building. So this is just a panoramic view of like a lake and some mountains. And here we have a bit more of a jungly landscape. And then over here is the logo that I landed on. Now I am gonna run this through removebg.com to remove the background, and it's probably gonna come out a little bit imperfect, but I think the imperfections in what we're doing is part of what we wanna see. Ultimately, how good is the result with this type of workflow? And I think while it's gonna be passable and maybe even surprisingly good, I think there are gonna be some bits and pieces that leave a bit to be desired. So I've got our little mock-up here pinned in the browser, and I've got some of our AI-generated art assets uploaded to my WordPress site. Now, all that's left to do is to jump into Oxygen and start building. So here we are on Oxygen on a blank page, and I'm going to be doing a lot of back and forth between the design and my page to make sure that we're matching things up. The first thing I want to do is get this kind of boxed layout going. We've got our, all of our content on a white background div here, and I'm just going to put everything within a section in my design, and we'll add this kind of gradient. Let's go ahead and grab the colors. I'm going to use Colorzilla, which is a browser extension, to pick this lighter green. Hopefully, yep, it worked. And then we'll grab the darker green as well. So let's do that and grab this darker green down here. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and get 
the other shades of green from this design because we've got this one here, which will be good for our buttons. And then we have another slightly lighter shade of green that is not really used for anything in the mock-up, but that's okay. It gives us the color to use uh, so we can apply it to whatever we think it'll work for. So let's go back over to oxygen and let's add our section. I am gonna be using classes here, so I'll call this main section. And let's go ahead and give this a background gradient using those colors we copied. So we'll add two colors. And the first one, we'll do that lighter green. So let me go up and grab that and paste that in. And we'll save this as brand light. And then let's grab the darker color here and paste that in. And we'll save that in Oxygen's Global Colors as Brand Dark. And now we have kind of the gradient that we had over there on the mock-up. Let's change the angle so that the light is in the top right corner and the dark is in the bottom left. So I'm just using my up and down arrows here to adjust that angle. So that looks pretty good and fairly similar to the way the mock-up had that gradient. So I'll be happy with that for now. Let's go ahead and drop in our content div and I'll give this a class of content and it needs a background color of white. And this is just gonna stand out in the middle of this section and be where all our content lives. I can't really tell. It kind of looks like it has rounded corners in the design here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Let's add a utility class called rounded in case we wanna use rounded border radius on anything else. So let's go down to borders and we'll use a very subtle border radius of about four pixels. Now let's go to advanced and let's lock this selector because I don't want this doing anything except for rounding the corners. This will keep me from editing it on accident. Now this content div does need to be 100% width. So let's drop that in there. And then we're gonna want some padding on it. So let's go to advanced size and spacing and add 32 pixels of padding. Now, just a note on this background gradient, we could have added that to the body itself, but I'm trying to avoid custom CSS in this video as much as possible. So let's take a look next at our layout. It looks like we just have kind of a two column layout with an image on the left, of course, this image kind of bled over, but it kind of looks like an AI generation mistake and not like it's intentional, so we'll probably ignore that. And then we have some bold text, some not bold text, and then a couple of buttons. So that'll be pretty easy to reproduce. We're gonna set our content div to a layout of grid, and we're gonna set it to two columns. Now this is using CSS grid, so we can have some fun with pretty creative layouts using these settings, but in this case, we're just using it to set up columns, so nothing too exciting. So let's drop in two divs, one and two, and now you can see that they're side by side and we've got our nice little grid gap automatically there. Now in the left-hand one, let's add one of those images that we generated previously. So let's browse and let's choose this one since it has some green tones in it to go with our design. Now, I do want to give this the rounded class. That's where these utility classes come in handy. We just drop that class on and now our borders are rounded. And then if we ever want to adjust it later, we adjust it one time and it applies to everything that uses that rounded class. Now over here, we need some text. So we'll drop in two text elements and let's just add a heading. This website was made by artificial intelligence which I may be selling myself a bit short here due to the amount of manual work required, but that's okay, you get the idea. So we'll set the text color to probably not that, probably just black, and then let's bump that up to 22 pixels and set the font weight to 600. Let's step that font size down so that it doesn't go over to two lines. And then let's drop in one paragraph of lorem ipsum here and then get rid of some of it because I don't want quite that much. So let's just go over here and get rid of a bit. Now underneath this text, we need to add some margin. So we'll go to advanced size and spacing and we could add it here for just this element. But what I like to do is set up a utility class called MB dash, and then some kind of name for my size of space. Sometimes I use goofy names like friend and neighbor to let me know how far away the next element's going to be. But in this case, we'll just use numbers. So we're going to have kind of a medium size space under this. So we'll do MB dash two. 
And on that class, we'll set the margin bottom to 16 pixels. And again, we're gonna go ahead and lock this class because it only has one job. Now, I think we just wanna center everything here. First, let's select our content div and let's set the vertical item alignment to center. Perfect. Now you can see we have the basics of our layout here. Now we need our buttons. So let's select this right hand div and let's add another div since these buttons are gonna be in a row. We wanna contain them in another div set to horizontal. And then we'll drop in a link wrapper and we'll give that a class of button. Now we can set the background to that lighter green background color that we grabbed from the design. And we'll save this as brand bold. And since this is going to be a button, we want to go to advanced typography and set the typography settings on the link wrapper itself so that we don't have to fuss with the settings on the text element that we're going to drop in. Let's set the font size to 18 pixels. Maybe we might want to adjust that and font weight to 700. And then let's go ahead and drop in some text to see how that looks. And of course the white is pretty low contrast on this. So that's why I wanted to go ahead and drop it in so I can adjust that. We'll say buy now, and then we'll add another button in a minute and maybe switch up the styles to have a second call to action, like learn more or something. But let's go ahead and go back to our link wrapper. And we do have a contrast problem. So let's go to advanced typography and let's try maybe our dark green on that button. I think that looks a little bit better and it's definitely more readable. Now, another trick I like to do to make things look a little more designed is I can set the font size to a smaller font size and I can set it to text transform uppercase and then a little bit of letter spacing and maybe a smaller font weight like 400. Now let's go back up to 500 and that looks pretty good. So I think we'll stick to that. Now the button itself uh, needs some spacing. So let's go to advanced size and spacing and let's add eight pixels on the top and bottom and 32 on the left and right to get that button aspect ratio. And then we want it to be rounded. So let's drop in our rounded class and switch back to button. Now we can duplicate this button. We have two of them. Um, we also need to add some space below this. So again, we could use that MB-2 class if we want the same distance between the text and the buttons as we want between the heading and the text. But in this case, I think I want a bit more because the relationship is a bit more distant. So I'm gonna say MB-3. Now, if MB-2 is 16 pixels, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy that class's styles to MB-3, we're gonna go to lock selector, and instead of 16 pixels, we're gonna do 32 pixels. And that gives the buttons a little bit more room to breathe. Now we can go back to advanced, we can lock that, and then we can get rid of MB-2 on the text there. Now our buttons obviously need some spacing. We could do this a couple of different ways. We could use grid if we wanted to, or we could just add some spacing to the right side of this first button, which for this simple of a layout, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll make sure we select the ID and not the class because we don't want both buttons to have the right side spacing. And we'll go to advanced size and spacing and add 32 pixels of margin on the right, which is too much. Let's back it off to 16. And let's change the second button to say, learn more. Now, one thing about our design is even though it's not explicit, it does have two elements within the button. And I think this left-hand element should be an icon. So let's drop an icon into these buttons. We'll drop in one of these icon elements and we'll change the color for these since they're a little bit thicker and you don't need to read them, we might be able to get away with white. So we'll set it to something like uh, 22 pixels and then let's change the icon to something appropriate here maybe a plus icon that might look kind of cool. And then on this link wrapper, we definitely need to set it to horizontal layout, move that icon over to the left. And then we're gonna again, add some right side margin to this icon, which I added about eight pixels, which looks okay for this. Now let's duplicate that, drag it over to our other button here and make sure that the layout for this button is correct as well. Now I've made a mistake here. If you look, I've added the horizontal layout rules to this button on the ID, which I don't wanna do. I actually wanna do it on the button class, which when we do that, you'll see that it affects both buttons. That's where classes really save you a lot of time. So on this one, we'll 
make this uh, maybe a book icon. Perfect. Since we're learning, we're probably reading something. So one thing I forgot to add, which isn't actually in the design, but something I wanted to do was our logo. So let's drop in a div and then let's add an image, which I've already uploaded the logo that we got from Midjourney. Uh, it's not perfect. It's not quite a circle, but it's something. Uh, so we're going to go with it. Um, it definitely is way too big. So we'll set it to something like 128 pixels. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the div that's around it and I'm going to go to advanced borders and I'm going to set the border radius to 100% because we want it to be circular. And then we're going to go to advanced background and set the background color to white. Now, what we want to do is position this above our content div. So we're opening the structure pane and moving this div on up, but we do want it still within our section. So let's drop it in there. And then we're going to make sure on our section that everything is centered. And now we have our little logo. Now what would look really cool is if this logo had a bit of a shadow underneath it. So we'll go to advanced effects box shadow, and we're going to add a bit of a shadow. I usually don't like a pure black for my shadows, so I'm going to make it kind of a charcoal gray, and we'll add a little bit of an offset there, a little bit more of a vertical offset, actually maybe no horizontal offset. And then we're going to adjust the blur and spread to get kind of a cool effect. That looks pretty good. Sometimes I like doing a negative spread, so we'll do negative five. And then we'll go to advanced layout and we're gonna raise the Z index of this to 10 to put it over top of our content div. Now what we can do is we can add some negative bottom margin. So something like negative 32 pixels to lay it right over our content div. But since we added that, we also probably want some more spacing on top of this content div to be sure that that logo doesn't overlap the content itself. So let's select the ID since we might not want this on all of our content divs and we'll go to size and spacing and set the top padding to it's 32 right now. We'll set it to 64 pixels and that gives us a little bit more room to breathe, but we still incorporate our logo. So now what we can do is extrapolate this design out a bit. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this content div. I'm gonna select the ID and remove that top padding. And in fact, we just need to go and clear it out so that the class style takes over. And then we'll add some margin on top, something like 64 pixels to give us some space. And then we can go ahead and rearrange this. Let's change the image to this other one that I have. And then let's go over here and rearrange these columns so that this one's on the left and that one's on the right. Now let's save this and look on the front end. We've mostly replicated the design in our AI generated mockup. It's a little different on the color scheme and things, but we basically took the idea and the bones of that and we made an actual web page. And does it look like it's gonna win any awards? Probably not. Is it better than me, a non-designer, just designing something from scratch? Maybe. It actually gave me a bit of a guideline to follow, which is kind of cool. But I do want to spruce it up a bit. So what I'm going to do is add something here at the top of this section. So we'll add a div. And we're going to be doing some weird stuff with the layout here. So let's collapse all of these expand our section and then select our section and go to advanced layout and set it to position relative. Now for this other div, we want to set it to advanced layout position absolute. And you'll note I'm not using a class here because I don't see any reason to repeat what I'm doing. So we'll set the top right and left to zero, which will position right here at the top of our section but it will not take up any space because it's absolutely positioned. Now let's go to advanced background and let's choose this jungle image. And we're also going to want to add a background overlay. So we'll add this dark green color, but then we're gonna adjust the opacity a bit so that that image shows through. Now let's set the height to something like 300 pixels. And then under advanced background, we can adjust the background size to cover. 
and the top position to 50% so that we get some of that cool scenery in the background. Now, this looks great, except for it's covering up our content boxes. So we just need to go over here to one of these content divs, choose the class, and go to Advanced, Layout, and set the Z-Index to something that will raise it above that image. And just like that, we now have a bit of a more interesting layout. So let's save this and jump up to the front end. So here you have it, a layout created by AI with art generated by AI and a logo from AI, including the color scheme and everything else. In fact, I think it took longer to generate the images than it did to actually build the site based on the images. So it did its job. It gave me a framework to work off of, which is basically what a mock-up design does anyways. I mean, this wasn't too different than going into a Photoshop file or a Figma file and reproducing a design a designer had given you into Oxygen or the site builder of your choice. And the end result is not too bad. It definitely could be better. If I was a better designer, there are lots of opportunities to improve this and make it stand out even more. But as an experiment, I'm going to consider this one fairly successful. Now, do I think that an AI mock-up like this is going to replace a human designer? Absolutely not, because there's a lot that goes into design, including intention. And a robot really doesn't have intention yet. Who knows what comes next? So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to use artificial intelligence to create a website in WordPress using Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.